So you're Peter Thiel. You're the co-founder of PayPal worth over $10 billion and one of the most powerful people alive right now. I'm a big fan. You have homes all over the US from Miami's man-made billionaire Bunker Island to Maui, but it's simply not enough. No matter how many fancy properties you purchase, being an American citizen is a liability. The political climate is crazy, things are getting more chaotic by the year, there are loads of regulations on businesses, there's just too many people. America is just a giant house of cards. This makes it one of the worst places to be if things hit the fan. A natural disaster, World War III, a nuclear winter? Anyone in America is completely screwed. And the way things are looking, any of those things could be just around the corner. It's the last place you want to be trapped in. And if things do go down, there is a good chance you will probably be trapped here. Just like during COVID, when American citizens were banned from traveling to a lot of places around the world. It turns out that our golden passport may not be so golden after all. That's why as a billionaire or any American for that matter, it's more important than ever to have a plan B. To have a second passport, or at least a second residence permit on you so that if things do go down, you can smoothly exit the country and leave the masses behind to escape to greener pastures. And those greener pastures are New Zealand. Ah yes, New Zealand the dream doomsday getaway for so many billionaires. And there are many reasons why New Zealand is the perfect getaway, which we'll go over soon, but it basically has everything you could want for the apocalypse. But the thing is, getting citizenship in another country isn't that simple, especially in New Zealand. Getting a visa is one thing, you could get a visa anywhere as a powerful billionaire, but citizenship? That is a whole different ballgame. Countries make it hard to become a citizen for a reason. And most people need to spend at least 5 years living in New Zealand before they can even apply for citizenship, according to the New Zealand government themselves. And that's just the beginning of the long list of requirements. But those are the rules for the regular applicants. And you're not some regular applicant wanting to become a New Zealand citizen. No, you're a very, very wealthy, influential person. So even though you had only spent 12 days in New Zealand in total your entire life, and you had zero intentions of moving there anytime soon, it didn't matter. Anyone else would have been laughed out the door of the immigration office, but not you. No, you are one of the most famous billionaires in the world. That's why in the blink of an eye, the New Zealand government decided to make an exception just for you and basically waive other requirements. And so in 2011, at a ceremony in Santa Monica, California, you officially became a New Zealand citizen with a New Zealand passport. The government said they gifted you citizenship due to your exceptional circumstances. Your skills as an entrepreneur and philanthropy were cited as reasons to give you a passport. They thought that by having a successful billionaire like Peter Thiel as a citizen, it would make New Zealand look good to the rest of the world and be beneficial to the country's population as a whole. But instead of promoting the country and singing its praises, you kept your newfound citizenship low-key. You weren't running around boasting about how great New Zealand was, you never even mentioned it. Well, if Peter Thiel was an amazing ambassador and salesperson for New Zealand, we would have found out he was a citizen of New Zealand because he would have told the world. The former minister of immigration said, but instead he quote kept it under wraps. He hasn't gone around telling the world that he's a citizen of New Zealand and that he's proud of New Zealand, end quote. That's because you don't want everyone flocking to New Zealand. No, you want to keep the remote paradise to yourself. But it will all be in vain. Because soon, all of the world's billionaires will start following in your same footsteps. So stay dangerous, subscribe for more. And this is why the rich are secretly moving to New Zealand. Aside from his interest in New Zealand, Peter Thiel is one of my favorite thinkers in business. One thing he says is that sales matters just as much as products. And if you're a business owner that wants to level up your sales, then you gotta check out this platform I call called Nextiva. Nextiva allows you to create new phone numbers so you can handle sales calls on a dedicated professional number all on their platform. That way you don't have to use your personal phone and compromise your privacy. This allows you to do a ton of cool stuff that's gonna make you a lot of money. You can assign numbers to salespeople without worrying about them walking away with a number. You can track customer relationships across text, calls, and other channels. You can add different phone numbers for different parts of your business. For example, you can have one number that you use to talk with suppliers and another number for customer service. Think about it, we have different emails like support at or sales at, but why don't we do the same with phone numbers? Next Tiva has over 1 million users, and many of them use it to manage the day-to-day -day operations of their companies. Great sales and great relationship management require tools, and Nextiva is one of the most trusted ones out there, while also allowing you to reduce your phone bill by up to 60%. Don't let an amateur business setup hold you back in 2024. And right now, you can get up to 50% off your plan by going to trynextiva.com slash jake. So scroll down and click the link below to elevate your business communication now. Thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Of all the possible places on the planet, billionaires are turning New Zealand into their sanctuary. But why? Out of everywhere they could go, what is so special about New Zealand? Well first let's start off with the basics. It's straight up beautiful. The scenery is out of this world, and New Zealand has every type of natural feature you could possibly want. 
There are hundreds of miles of picturesque mountain ranges, expansive coastlines with beach access, forests and rivers. There are even volcanoes and hot springs. The nature in New Zealand is still relatively untouched, one resident said. Its massive coastline, moderate climate, great scenic diversity, public spaces and sophisticated urban centers attract new thinkers who embrace its values. It's a little island paradise with basically everything you could want, all in one convenient location. Then there's the matter of taxes. If you're really wealthy, you want to make sure you're a citizen of a country that isn't going to eat up your fortune every tax season. And in New Zealand, the country's wealthiest citizens pay the least amount in taxes. In 2023, New Zealand's wealthiest families pay a 15% lower tax rate than minimum wage workers because capital gains are barely taxed there. The country also provides all the amenities you can need as a billionaire. Luxury real estate, helicopter rides and mega yacht charters, top quality wineries and farm to table fine dining restaurants have people calling New Zealand the next food capital of the world. And then there's the insane golf scene. The island has some of the most exclusive golf clubs on the planet. It costs around $6,000 per day to play on one of these invite-only elite courses. And the members list is kept strictly confidential. Quote, people appreciate that they come here without everyone knowing about whether you're Joe Smith or the Prime Minister, one staff member said. All of this privacy is perfect for low-key billionaires who want to just enjoy their riches and their high-class friends in peace. And it's not just golf courses that are extremely private, it's the entire country that's exclusive. New Zealand is actually the most isolated temperate landmass on the planet. It takes around 17 hours to fly from the US to New Zealand, plus there are plenty of expansive properties where billionaires can hide far away from the masses, which makes it the perfect place to build your end of the world compound. So you're a billionaire who has settled in New Zealand. You use your money instead of to skip your way through the whole pesky citizenship process. And now you are an official holder of a New Zealand passport. So what do you do now? Well, you get started working on your multi-million dollar compound. New Zealand has an entire elite bunker market for rich people who worry about the world ending. Quote, they're looking for something to protect their families, something that's self-sufficient, something that they can live in for a prolonged period of time. The manager of a bunker business called Rising S said, quote, we don't sell fear, we sell preparedness, end quote. His company sells a dozen compounds a year just to clients in New Zealand alone. The buyers have to get permits from the government because the units are usually constructed underground. But the ruling doesn't always go in their favor. The New Zealand government may have been on Peter Thiel's side in 2011 when it came to its citizenship, but things have shifted since then. New Zealand locals were pissed that their country just handed Thiel a passport, especially since he hasn't done much to promote New Zealand since then. So the government was hesitant when the billionaire asked to turn his huge 477-acre estate into a doomsday prepper home. He had purchased the property for $13.5 million a few years earlier, and it is enormous. It's about half the size of Central Park, but now he wanted a massive upgrade. Tio's compound would include several independent buildings that could hold up to 24 guests plus accommodation for the owner. He planned to build a spa, a theater, a library, even a meditation pod. There would be lodge management buildings, infrastructure, landscape treatment, water features, and he wanted all of it to be built directly into the pure, untouched New Zealand landscape literally inside the natural hillside, so it would be partially hidden from view. But New Zealand's residents were just not having it. They thought that Teal's compound would completely destroy the untainted landscape, so people started writing letters to the council, begging them to oppose or change the billionaire's building plans. One local who lived nearby pleaded that it would destroy our beautiful lake environment, and it actually worked. The government turned down his request to build the compound in 2022, but knowing that it's Peter Thiel, he'll probably find a way to sway the government sooner or later. Because at the end of the day, New Zealand is still the best choice. It finally happened. The world as we know it is falling apart. But if you're a billionaire, you probably have been preparing for this day for years. And that is the real reason why all these guys are getting New Zealand citizenship. Because New Zealand gives you the highest chance of surviving the end of the world. Number one, it's an independent island with moderate temperatures and very precipitation, which means it will probably make it through if the climate really changes around the world. Unlike somewhere like Miami, for example. 
Number 2. New Zealand's location is also far enough from feisty areas like North America and Europe, so it won't be impacted by any world wars or any other crises like that. And if a nuclear battle does break out eventually, the island is so far out of the blast radius of most targets that New Zealanders will be relatively unaffected. But the most important reason is that number 3 is self-sufficient. Being in an isolated place during the apocalypse is great and all until you start getting hungry. Once the food runs out, you're going to be able to support yourself for possibly decades to come. And most places that are isolated enough to avoid a blast radius also have the bigger problem of not being able to supply their own food. But New Zealand doesn't have that issue. Nope, it's one of the few countries that can manage to be self-sufficient and grow its own crops even during a nuclear winter. One study that thoroughly analyzed 38 island nations to figure out how well they were fared during a nuclear winter stated that New Zealand has the potential to preserve an industrial society through this kind of catastrophe. Which is pretty remarkable. A big reason that Peter Thiel became obsessed with New Zealand in the first place was because of a book called The Sovereign Individual, How to Survive and Thrive During the Collapse of the Welfare States. Great book by the way, highly recommend. It was published over 25 years ago, it predicted the rise of cryptocurrency, and it talks about how the power of the state is in decline, and how the future will be more decentralized, where sovereign individuals will have more power. In the book, the authors call out New Zealand as the perfect place for this new class of sovereign individuals. And so, the billionaires embraced it. But now, it looks like New Zealand is starting to regret their new billionaire friends. Even though it was a hub spot for the elite over the past decade, New Zealand is getting sick of all these billionaires. It all started last year when the country released a new investor visa that all these billionaires were using to get into the country. This new visa had way tighter regulations than the old system that pretty much let anyone in who had enough money. Locals were complaining that these visas for wealthy foreigners were driving up the housing costs for everyone. Plus, the visa allowed investors to simply invest in passive investments, like in shares or bonds in New Zealand, instead of requiring them to invest in real New Zealand businesses. So it really wasn't benefiting the country's citizens at all. Lots of other countries were having similar complaints about the influx of rich immigrants, and these other countries were shutting down their investor visa programs altogether. But for New Zealand, they didn't want to cut it off entirely, so they just made it a lot harder. Now the minimum investment was nearly double the old one, and applicants weren't allowed to count their property or bond investments anymore. This is why the new visa received 97% fewer applicants compared to their old visa. That means a lot of these rich people are going to have to find a new safe haven, or they'll just have to cough off more money if they want to be prepared for the end of the world. And who knows? With the stricter requirements for New Zealand, there is probably a new secret billionaire haven that is probably in the works right now. <laughs> 